Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Dan Fisher's Experience. Folks, thank you so much for listening on Apple iTunes, Spotify, all other podcasting platforms, and YouTube. My friends, we've got an interesting one for today. I recently posted a question on my Instagram saying, should a boy and a girl be raised differently? And I got people on both sides. And I think this is a very interesting conversation that obviously gender comes into play and biology comes into play. I'll, I'll give it to you straight. Yes, I do believe that they should be raised differently. Now, let's, let's talk about why I think that. So before we get to that, we have a serious argument here about societal upbringing. I'd, I'd be lying to you if I said, hey, society doesn't play a role at all. No, of course it does, right? At a young age, when you have a young man growing up, or at the age of three, four, five, he's encouraged to run around, play, jump, be wild, or maybe a girl's more encouraged to sit down, play with dolls, be a little more calm, be a little more docile, right? Or maybe a girl will engage in some of those behaviors or start wrestling with someone and say, hey, that's not very ladylike. And the argument is, well, Daniel, if you start kids at such a young age, right, and you, you put them into two different categories, don't you think that wedge will naturally increase when they're, when they're in their teens and when they're young adults, right? Because you can impact a human being. And, you know, if there's ever a stage to impact someone, you would have to think when they're kids, right? You have the biggest impact on their beliefs, their values, and their interests and what they want to go and do in life. The other side of this argument is, listen, Boys and girls have biological differences. More specifically, when I say bio, biology, right, a lot of people think body, which it is body, right? It's physical. But a lot of it is also psychologically. For example, we know that a boy and girl think differently. First of all, a man and a woman, they're more similar than they are different. This is very important to point out. However, they are still different. And what you notice is when you look at the, the most widely accepted personality model. So this is model in personality, and, and it is the most accepted thing in all of literature right now. The acronym for it is OCEAN, openness conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, and neuroticism. For example, we know that women tend to be higher on the agreeableness scale. What does that mean? That means that they are more compassionate, they have more empathy, they're more giving, they're more loving, and they're really good team players. We know that men are lower on that agreeableness scale. So they're more likely to say, no, F this, I'm not gonna play. If you have a boy and a girl, and one of them dropped out of school, on average, it's probably the boy. If you have a boy and a girl and someone told off the teacher, chances are it's the boy. That doesn't mean girls don't do it, but a boy would be more likely to do it. A boy is more likely to say, up yours. That's why they're more susceptible to being antisocial, getting into things like, you know, not falling into society's rules. It's more the guy who says, F this, I'm gonna go be an entrepreneur and do my own thing. It doesn't mean there aren't girl entrepreneurs out there. It doesn't mean that there aren't girls who go against the system and that kick ass. But generally speaking, guys are lower on that disagreeable, on that agreeableness trait. And actually, one of the number one predictors of ending up in prison is being extremely low in agreeableness. You can imagine, right? You're like, oh, F, you know, society's rules. I'm going to do what I want to do. You also got to understand, when you're a man, you got a lot of testosterone. Or as a young boy, it starts, right? You got a lot of testosterone. We also know that young boys are higher in uh, aggression than girls are. What does that mean? That means that if you're more aggressive, you're looking at things like competition. You want to do first. You want to outdo people. Mix that in with this idea of being a little less agreeable. You know, you have young boys who want to say, no, I want to do it my way. I want to push myself. I want to get ahead. Me first, then you. Again, I'm not saying all guys are like this, but I'm saying generally speaking, if we were to take 100 guys, the majority of them would be more aggressive than a girl psychologically, and the majority of them would be less agreeable than a girl is. And this argument comes to this idea that if you're a boy and if you're a girl, in the current society that we live in, you're going to face different obstacles you're simply going to have different challenges in front of you. Now, when I say, hey, a boy and a girl should be raised differently, I don't think we should make everything different. I think they should both be taught to be kind and compassionate individuals. They should both be taught to chase their dreams and to work hard and, and give back when they can and stand up for themselves when they need to and be aggressive when they need to. But there's also certain things that I feel like you gotta prioritize depending on the sex. For example, if you're, a, for, if you're a person who believes that we live in the patriarchy, meaning a society that's dominated by men, you got to understand, as a girl, in a lot of places, you, well, what's the word I'm looking for? The, you're underestimated. Ah, oh, she's a girl, she can't work those long hours. She can't keep up with the guys. I would argue, if you believe that, that we're in a male-dominated world, it's harder for a girl to climb up that hierarchy. Wouldn't you agree? So you got to have that conversation with a girl if that's your mindset being like, hey, listen, he's a guy, maybe he's a white guy, he's going to have an easier chance, people are going to think better of him. You're a girl, you're going to have to outwork him. You're going to have to outwork him, you're going to have to prove to everyone that, yeah, you are good enough to be the CEO of this firm. You know, you are good enough to be, you know, this six-figure entrepreneur, to be the head doctor at this place. 
So you got that extra, that extra hurdle to jump over if you're a girl, in my opinion. On the other side of things, you are also literally gonna be in situations where, okay, let's go back to personality. I would tell both the kids, the young boy and the young girl, hey, it's important to be aggressive when necessary, but I would particularly focus on the young girl because girls on average are more likely to let someone walk all over them. They're less likely to be assertive, less likely to be confrontational, less likely to be aggressive. And that is one reason why girls make less money than men. There's a plethora of reasons involved. And of course, discrimination, I do believe is a part of it. But one reason is that when you get stepped on, a girl psychologically is less likely to push back. And it's extremely important to prioritize that. Again, I tell them both, be aggressive when necessary, but especially for the girl. Because she needs it, she needs it a little bit more. And on that same handle, I would look at the boy and I'd say, hey man, it's important to be a team player when you can. And I'd really shove down compassion, kindness, empathy. Because generally speaking, if you just look at studies and if you just look at the statistics, the guy, I really wanna make sure you are kind, you're compassionate, you know, you can be vulnerable when you need to. And for the girl, hey, you can be aggressive, be assertive. Don't always agree with what everybody's saying. You know, stand up for yourself. So I would monitor it based on the, the studies that we know based on their psychology, the psychological traits, and their biology. Another point I would also give, if I have a son who's 15 years old, I would feel much more comfortable sending him out to a party than a 15 year old daughter. That's how I feel. Because you have to have different conversations. If I have a girl, I would say, hey listen, you're gonna go out there tonight, you're gonna have a good time, it'll be fun with your friends. If by any chance at this party, you find yourself alone with a guy and he's making advances that you don't want him to do, make sure that you say no. And don't do that girly thing where like uh, girls are sometimes, they, they wanna be polite or something. A guy makes it, and she'll kind of laugh and like, ha ha ha, no, but she feels super uncomfortable. No, don't laugh. This isn't a laughing matter. Don't smile, be assertive. Look him in the eyes and say no. If that doesn't work, shout, scream, hit him. Hit him in the eyes, hit him in the groin, run. Get your friends, tell people. That's what I'd say. But if you're a guy, we're not even having that conversation. I sit down with my 15 year old son, hey man, if you, wanna, if you go to the party, have fun with your friends, but if you find yourself in a room alone with a girl and she's making a move on you, he'll be like, score. I'd be like, no, 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 imagine you don't like her. Why not dad, just imagine, imagine you don't like her. She's like, okay, and she makes a move on you. Um, you know, just say no, like don't, if you don't wanna hook up with someone, don't, don't do it. That's it, what, what, what else should I say to him, huh? You should scream and shout. And if she keeps on going, you should punch her or hit her. Chances are he won't need to. And here is the thing that everybody's sleeping on. The difference between why a girl and a boy should be raised differently because they're gonna face different obstacles is because there is a physical threat that you see a lot more with girls than with guys. There just is. If that girl, let's say that girl, someone puts a hand on her, on her knee, she says, no, please stop. He keeps going. She shouts, she punches him in the face, she runs out, he falls after her. When she tells people, hey, I said no, he was persisting, I hit him. They're gonna be like, where's the kid? Let's, let's continue, let's kick his ass for you, right? But if roles were reversed, and this boy came out and this girl came out with a bloody nose and they're like, yo, d yo, John, what happened in there? She made a move on me. I said, no, she persisted. So I punched her in the nose. They'd be like, uh, what? Why? Do you see what I mean? Let me, let me paint this picture for you. Folks, there are guys out there who do feel, who could feel physically threatened. Folks, I'm not a big guy. I'm five foot seven. I got a friend of mine, loved him, uh, Smith. Six foot two, six foot three. If I ever ran into Smith at midnight and he wanted to mug me, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'm getting mugged. I'm getting mugged blind. There's not a damn thing I can do. He's gonna eat me alive, <laughs> right? But, so, so what I'm trying to say is, there are guys who could feel physically threatened, but every single woman has felt physically threatened before. And physically threatened, I don't mean that the guy necessarily did something or said something, but you're in a situation, either you're sitting in a taxi cab, you feel like someone's walking behind you and you're going, oh man, like what if he wants to do something? You know, can I run? You know, can he overpower me? Man, he's got about 50, 100 pounds on me. Some guys have felt like that before, but I would guarantee you almost every woman has felt that before. 
there are some tough girls out there. Don't get me wrong. This is something I heard online, and I 100% agree with it. A tough girl, a tough girl could could kick a lot of regular guys' butts. She really could. But a tough guy could beat all the women, 100%, and it wouldn't even be a struggle. On one hand, you can't come out and say, hey, you know, boys and girls, we should raise them equally. And then on the other hand, go, guys, you don't know what it's like to get harassed all the time. You don't know what it's like to get groped and to get all this extra attention and to feel uncomfortable. Exactly. You don't know what it's like. So we shouldn't raise you as if it's the same. Right? I shouldn't look at you and when you tell me, Daniel, I felt uncomfortable. This guy was looking at me. He kept making rude comments. I'd be like, you're probably just making that up. You say, why? Well, it's never happened to me or any of my friends. It's like, Daniel, you, you're looking at the world through, through a different lens. I was, um, so I'm in this counseling class, right? And they said, hey, one of the worst things that a counselor could do is they could say, this is what my prof said, to have this, I don't see color. We should, we're all living the same in the same society. Wrong. We're not all the same. We are not all equal. And we should see color. Because the moment I say, I don't see color, and you're a black man, and you come to my counseling session, and you say, hey, man, I feel like, Man, I'm, but this place I'm working, they don't like me. And it's not because I don't work hard. It's not because, you know, I'm doing everything. I think it's because of the color of my skin. So oh, that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. No, Rick, it has nothing to do with colors. Come on. This idea of, hey, I don't see color is not a good idea. Because people go through life with a different lens. Whether you're Middle Eastern, whether you're darker skin, whether you're, again, your, your ethnicity plays a role. I wish it didn't. I wish it didn't. But it does. People do discriminate based on things, and sex is 100% one of them. So if I was a counselor, you come to my office as a girl, saying, yeah, Daniel, like, if I say, no, it's, you know, we get treated the same by society, or we should be treated equally. We see the world the same way, and we face the same obstacles. It's like, well, I'm going to totally dismiss some of your things. Hey, Daniel, this group of two or three guys were looking at me. They were checking you out. That's sick. No, it kind of made me feel uncomfortable. They're a little older than me. I didn't feel good, so I don't understand. No, you're probably just making that up. Like, you know what I mean? It, it, it's not a good way to look at it, folks. You know, and, and I see online as well, people are like, um, you know, immediately when girls say, oh, I feel, I don't feel very comfortable walking at night. You know, if I see someone following me, I don't feel too good. You know, I have to clutch my keys and my knuckles. I got to be ready. And, and I don't like that. I feel scared. And then you have guys commenting, well, I feel scared too. It's like, dude, I'm not arguing the fact that, that as a guy, you might not feel 100% comfortable walking out at midnight either. But it's not the same thing as being a girl. It's not. And I'm saying that from a place of love, from a place of care. It is not the same thing. Boys and girls should be raised differently because essentially you're entering into a, a society where, see, here's the thing, right? You're gonna say, well, Daniel, if we start treating them differently at a young age, obviously they're gonna have these beliefs. But folks, I'm talking about their biology and their psychology. Meaning, listen, why are guys more likely to make inappropriate advances on a girl? Why? I would argue testosterone is a huge part. I would argue aggression is a huge part. When I'm filled with testosterone and aggression, I don't mind making more riskier moves that, that like one reason, you know, what guys would say, oh, why don't girls ever ask us out? You need a lot of courage to do that. And, and you need a lot of like F you to societal rules. If she directs me, it doesn't matter. It's just a number. I'll go ask someone else out. Guys have a lot of aggression. Guys have a lot of testosterone. And that's one of the reasons that helps them go ask out this girl or be brave, you know, or get shot down. That's okay. Go ask out someone else. And that's what also makes them more likely to make inappropriate advances on a girl. I'm not saying, hey, it's testosterone's fault, but I'm saying, hey, psychology plays a real role. And this, this idea that you say, oh, well, at a young age, you know, we're going to say both of them can re chase their dreams and the girl can wrestle if she wants to and the guy can just cook and clean if he wants to and then that's it. Folks, I don't think it's as easy as that. I, I really don't for the reasons that I've just said. There will always be this physical threat that a guy will have over a girl. And because of that, we, we need to adjust that. You know, there's a saying, it's like, we should all be treated equally. Like, ah, debatable. Debatable, depends on what, right? I think this is a situation where we gotta look at like equity. What is equitable, right? Based on you and based on your size and your physique and how fast you can run, we gotta hold the criteria accordingly or adapt it accordingly to you. There's just that, that physical, it's just something you can't, you know, there's nothing you can do about it. There's nothing you can do about it. And I'm looking at this post right now. There's a girl. Um, her name is Lucy. And she put this um, post up and it said, 
text me when you get home on our Instagram. And, and basically, it was this idea where so many women are just thinking about, you know, getting home safe, right? You're getting in a, in a taxi, you're getting in a cab, and you're, you're worried, you know, what if he takes me somewhere, right? What if he holds me down? What if he wants to do something to me, right? Can I defend myself? And, and she's talking about how we've all been in this position, and, and it's a terrible thing to be, to always have to be paranoid. Um, and she says, uh, I'm just quoting her post, she goes, I wish more men understood the fact that we cannot walk alone at night with headphones in. That whenever we get in Ubers, there's this lingering thought, this could be it. And again, like, guys would respond to this and be like, uh, well, I mean, I, I, I've had a shady Uber driver before, I've had a shady taxi driver before, but it's not the same thing. Why? Because you don't have that physical threatening aspect to it. I'm, I'm making this up right now. If I go into a room with a girl, she has no idea who I am. I make a move on her, she turns me down, but it's just me and her, door's locked. Is, does she have a thought and go, you know, what if, he, what if he doesn't take no for an answer? I would think she has, she, she does have that thought. If me and a girl go into a room, door's locked, she makes a move on me, I'm not interested. Do I feel threatened? No. It's, let's, let's make it unbelievably descriptive. What's she gonna do, hold me down? It, it, that, do you see what I mean here, folks? Like, there's not that aspect to it. And because that factor isn't involved, it's like, it, it doesn't, it's, it's not the same. It's not the same thing. Right? Listen, you want to talk about equality. We're not equal. We are not equal. Boys and girls are not equal. And just human being one and human being two are not equal. We're not equal in our speed. We're not equal in the amount of weight we can lift. We're not equal in our public speaking skills. We're not equal in our abilities to solve math equations. We're not equal in our basketball skills. We're not equal in our ability to do stats homework. We're not equal in, in our interests and in our motivations, in our upbringings. No, none of that is equal. Now, mind you, we should be given equal opportunity. We should all be treated with respect. We should all be given equal access to education and healthcare. We should all be treated equal as, as citizens and given the right to vote and respect it. But this idea that we're all equal. If, if we were all equal, then the Olympics would be boring. Everybody would finish at the exact same time when they're sprinting. Wrestling matches would be a stalemate. But we're not equal. And we should not raise children to think that we are. In, in that specific context that I provided for you, right? Not that you're any less of a human being, not that you're any worse or whatever, but seriously, in terms of personality. People are not the same in terms of skills, again, strength, speed, knowledge. You know, there's certain things we're equal in, there's certain things that we're not equal in. So I think when we talk about raising kids, you, in the society that we live in, we have to talk about that. You know, we, we have to talk about, hey, listen, you're growing up in this world where you're going to face certain obstacles and you're going to face certain obstacles. There's a lot of overlap between a boy and a girl in the world that they grew up in. But there are things that are inherently just in your lane if you are a boy and in your lane if you are a girl. You know, if you have a boy or something, you would hope that if he's out with his girlfriend or his partner or whoever, that he'd step up if, if there was a problem. That he doesn't sit back and go, so uh, man, do you got this one or uh, sh should I call the cops? Like, you would hope that he'd step up. And not saying that the girl can't step up if you have a daughter, but you would hope that the guy can use his physicality to his advantage. Use it as a leverage, you know, you have it. So I think that's extremely, extremely important. And again, when I see things like this, like, hey, like girls can't get home safe or girls constantly being harassed or getting groped and just feeling uncomfortable, it's like, dude, that is further evidence to show that boys and girls should not be the same. Because I, I have friends of mine who are girls who've talked about being catcalled, who've talked about being groped or have, uh, people have said uncomfortable things to them. But I don't know of a single guy friend of mine who's been catcalled harassed or groped. I'm sure there's guys out there. I'm, I'm, I'm positive. But the ratio is not even close. I would have to assume it's not even close. Like two completely different things. And I would think 100%. I think those are absolute factors that are involved. We're raising a boy and a girl in the world that we live in. 100%. It's just, it's without a doubt. Without a doubt. You know, women see the world through a different lens. And I think to ignore that and to say, no, you're growing up in the same society, we're going to treat you the same, I think would be doing a disservice to women. I really do. If you're a woman and you're listening to this, I want to let you know I care for you and I want to help you. And when I say we're not equal, I don't, I don't want you to think men are up here, women are down here. Not at all. I think we should just not lie to ourselves 
and, and we should help each other where we can. And, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that whatsoever. So as soon as this stuff really took off, I saw there was a trend on Twitter and, and the hashtag was uh, all, not all men. And immediately right when something like this happens, right, statements are made such as all men are trash. You know, men just have to get it together. So naturally, right, when you have one force on one side, you have another one that says and goes, uh, no, not all men. What are you talking about? I don't. You know, my buddy doesn't. My brother doesn't. It wasn't me. Now girls bring up an interesting point. They say, hey, listen, um, almost every girl ever knows someone who's been, again, harassed, groped, sexually assaulted, something like that, but no guy knows the rapists, knows a rapist. That's suspicious. Like, is it? Is it really? But what do you think, do you think we, we talk about that stuff? Okay, check this out. So the problem with social media is you read something like, um, men need to step up, men need to change, men need to do better. Okay, I'm a man, what would you like, to, what would you like me to do? I'm listening. What would you like me to change? So, well, I want you to stop harassing and catcalling women. Never have, never will. Well, I want you to tell your friends and people who you see to stop doing it. Okay. Well, first of all, first of all, my friends, do you, based on who I am, do you think I hang out with people who do that stuff? Seriously, listen, we all have mothers and sisters and people who are lives who are, who are females and who we love dearly. Do you really think I'm hanging out with people who are catcalling, groping women, sexually assaulting them and, and not saying anything about it? And then you'd say, well, you know, clearly, I mean, you know, it happens to a bunch of girls. You're telling me you just don't know anyone that's done that to, to a girl? It's like, yo, what do you think we do? Do you think us guys sit around around the fire and go, hey man, I groped a girl last night. No way, man, I groped three today. Oh, that's crazy. I can't, like, no. The majority of guys do not do that. We do call each other out. And if there's ever a group of guys doing that, just know they're all predators and they all deserve whatever's coming to them. But no, the regular person does not think such a thing. You would call it out, 100%. So now it becomes an interesting conversation, right? Because it's like, well, what happens now? We know that women get treated like this. We know that men do not get treated like this nearly as much as women do. Again, going back to my earlier point, why boys and girls should be raised differently. So what do we do? Now we've got two options. Option number one, to, to all my females listening, and guys too, but especially girls, be careful, be cautious when you're going out. You know, be aware, right? Look around, have your keys in between your knuckles. Always be ready and assume the worst case scenario. I would rather have you assume the worst case scenario and nothing happens than assume the best case scenario and something happens. You might say, well, Daniel, you know, like I'm not doing anything wrong. It's guys and if they need to regulate themselves, they need to stop doing it. I'm not doing anything, right? Guys should focus on themselves and stop engaging in those behaviors. That leads me to option two. I make a podcast like this or Instagram like this and I say, guys, you need to stop sexually assaulting people. And while you're at it, stop running red lights, stop robbing people, stop doing child sex trafficking or sex trafficking in general, and stop killing people. And I'd hope that everybody would listen. Here's the problem. The latter is impossible. Nobody will listen to me. The only people who will listen to my message are people who are already following said message. The guy who sexually assaulted four girls and gotten away with it is not going to see a commercial by a couple of A-list celebrities saying sexual assault is wrong. Join the campaign now and just self-regulate. He's not going to go, you know what, man? This sexual assaulting thing, I think I'm really hurting women. You know, I think I'm going to change. I think this is really open my perspective. No, he does not care. He does not care. The people who kill or murder, kidnap, sexually assault, grope women and do super inappropriate things, they don't care about what's right or wrong. They don't want to be educated. They know it's wrong and they do it anyways. You know, I hear all the time, oh man, if only guys just didn't, couldn't sexual assault. And it's like, dude, I'm 100% in your boat. If only people wouldn't kidnap or rob stores or lie or run red lights or litter, then we wouldn't need to have police now, would we? Right, and, and that police thing is a whole other different topic. But why do we have police? We have police to enforce the laws. You wouldn't need police if everybody already enforced said laws, correct? 
So saying, hey, I wish that people would just not break the rules. It's like, that's not gonna cut it. That is just so unbelievably simplistic. The last thing I want you to do if you're a friend or a family member listening to this, and if, especially if you're a woman, please don't think, well, I'm just gonna live my life and he should just know that, that rape is bad, so he shouldn't do it. It's not my fault if it happens. It's like, the ending, you're 100% right. It's not your fault. It's not, oh, she was wearing it, so she was asking for it. It's not. But please don't look at people and assume that they're all like guys like me or like the guys in your life right now that are, that are rational, logical thinkers, that are good civilians in society, that are quote unquote nice guys. There are some people that they're so far off the deep end. What's right and wrong does not matter. I wish I could just leave my, my door open. I wish I could, you know, that, that I could just trust people, that they wouldn't just barge into my home, but I can't and I don't. We have to assume the worst because you guys, listen, I don't know what you think this world is, but it's, it's, not, a, it's not a safe place. It's, this isn't a utopian society where everybody's treated equally, everything's perfect, no one gets murdered, no one gets kidnapped. It's not like that, it's a lot darker. Now, do you wanna choose and accept it for its darkness? Embrace it and voluntarily proceed? Or do you want to look away and pretend like it's not what it actually is? Please don't do the latter because then you're lying to yourself. What I'd say is please be careful. Be cautious when you're going out there. So Daniel, I, I just I have to be paranoid all my life if I'm a girl, so that's it? I always have to watch my back and be ready for a guy to do something? I really don't know what, what else we can do. Like I said, that commercial of saying, hey, sexual assault is wrong, you know, I'm going to listen. The friends, the people around me are going to listen. But that guy who's so far gone, the guy who's already murdered three people, it's not about educating. It's not about, oh, I, I didn't know that was a bad thing to do. He's gone. Well, just tell him it's wrong. It, it's, it's, just, it's such a simplistic view and, and you, you can't approach it with that perspective. The, the troublesome part is this, right? So listen, we can talk about makeup, for example. Now, makeup was created as a form of sexual signaling, meaning, Makeup first emerged in the media because they said, well, what is one way that we can profit off people with respect to capitalism? They said, well, if we can make women feel like they're not as pretty as they could be, they want to be prettier. Why? Because husbands like pretty wives. So thus, a woman wants to make herself as pretty as possible. It's not because she needs a man, but because human beings were social creatures. Yes, we want to be in relationships. Men and women, generally speaking, we want to be in relationships. And for a girl, it was like, hey, if you want to be beautiful, you need to have makeup on. That's what, what's going to make the difference between you dying alone and you finding a husband and having kids and all that good stuff. So when makeup and stuff came along, folks, why is lipstick red? Why is that the primary color for lipstick? Why are high heels red? Science was done on this way. It wasn't random. Why, there's a reason it's not just purple or it's not green or it's not blue. I'm not saying those colors aren't out there, but psychology of colors has shown that the color of red for whatever reason kind of, when someone's looking at you subconsciously, it gives them these feelings of, of um, this arousal and the stimulation and it looks sexy and you're like, wow, you kind of get ramped up. I'm not saying a girl who wears high heels or wears a short skirt is asking for it. I'm not saying that she even wants to sleep with anyone. But I'm saying that is the origin. That is where it came from. Whether a, a person does it consciously or subconsciously. You ask a biologist, you ask a sociologist, you ask a psychologist, they would all agree with that. And you do have girls who I know personally who like to tease, who like to flirt, but don't actually want to get in a relationship. Like I'm sure you've heard of girls who flirt with people over text, but, but they don't actually want it to get anywhere. You know, when you're gonna, when you're gonna end up meeting up, they're like, oh, actually, I, I don't really want to. So there's those people. But then there's also the people who, they're not wearing anything provocative. They're not showing cleavage. They're not wearing high heels. And they still get harassed. And they still get insulted. And they still get catcalled. And you know what? It's not their fault. Not at all. It is 100% not their fault. They can be out with their friend, they're dressed up a little bit. They're not asking for it. They're not smiling at anyone. They're not flirting with anyone. And they still get harassed by guys. And that is not their fault at all. It's not. It is on the guy's fault. So, so now the conversation is like, well, if it's the guy's fault, the guys should just stop. Again, we get into this conversation. People like myself, people who are logical, rational thinkers, who, who have morals and values, 100%, duh, and the sky is blue. But for the person who's so far gone that he's already sexually assaulted three girls, it's like the, the idea of right and wrong is, is it, it's not even a guideline. Like it's, it's not even, do you know what I mean? Like the talk for education, for those people, in my opinion, it's gone. 
when you're so far away from, from society and civilization and what people think, just saying, we need to educate men. It's like, for that person, I, it, let me paint you a picture of how dark someone's mind could be. One of the reasons why we're interested in serial killers is because we can't comprehend how someone can do such a heinous act. We like to think that if someone kills someone or rapes someone or sexually assaults them, and immediately afterwards they regret it or they were in the heat of the moment. But guess what? Some people were not in the heat of the moment. Some people don't regret it. Some people it makes their day. Some people it makes their year. Because if I can hold you down and do whatever I want to, I have a sense of power. I'm going to dominate you and there's not a damn thing that you can do about it. And I'm gonna enjoy it. I wanna enjoy seeing you cry. I'm going to enjoy your suffering. I'm going to take pleasure out of your pain. And it's going to help me sleep at night. And I'm going to do it again and again and again. To the ordinary person, something like that sounds insane. you got to understand, that's the people who are engaging in this behavior. I'm not saying everyone is like that. But when you have people who repeatedly do something when they know it's wrong, they repeatedly harass women, they repeatedly grope women, they repeatedly in, uh, you know, make inappropriate advances or, or rape a woman, you gotta say, that's a lot of people's mindset. They can't stop. And those people need psychological help. Like, bro, you need therapy. You don't need a commercial. You don't need a powerful Instagram post. You, you need help. You need help. And that's what I'm trying to protect you against. Because I love you and I care for you and, and whoever you are, but especially for girls, but guys as well, I don't wanna see you get hurt out there. And again, going back to that thing why, guys and girls, boys and girls should be treated, uh, raised differently is because you're going to face those different kinds of obstacles. That guy exists and he takes pleasure in your pain and, and he's sick and he needs help. But I would again much rather have you be ready for something terrible to happen than not be ready and something does happen. It sounds unfair, I know, because a lot of you ladies, you're not doing anything wrong. You're really not, and I 100% believe you. But again, I feel like it's those outliers, right? I don't want you to think that we guys, we just sit around, and I'm sure that there's, there's a group here and there, but again, I've never encountered one. I've never been in a situation where I'm sitting down with friends and someone says that in a joke or something. You know, but I guarantee you, if they are, that means that they're all effed up in the head. And again, they're going to get what's coming to them, right? But when you talk about men need to step up, it's like, well, yeah, but within reason, right? Some guys, we only have so much to do, right? I can control my circle, right? I can control the people around me. I can control myself. It's a tough conversation to have. Gender differences are not just societal, you know, and you have to look at the biology and you have to look at the psychology. So what do we do as men? How can men help? Well, number one thing would be be aware that boys and girls are raised differently. And because of that, you're going to see the world differently. And people are going to interact with you differently. That's important. If you think that we're raised the same, we're going to be treated equal by society, I don't think that's the right view to take. This uh, young girl, Lucy, who also put, you know, that same text me when you get home post, she also put another post. It has about nine or ten pieces of advice. Lucy took it upon herself to answer the question, how can men help plus be better allies? I'm going to read them quote for quote and give you my honest thoughts on them about what men can do to help some of these women being harassed and, and, you know, being in these uncomfortable positions. Because again, I don't believe that boys and girls should be raised the same because of the different obstacles that they face with everything that I've talked about in this video. So tip number one from Lucy, how can men help plus be better allies? Listen first, don't rush into fixing without understanding. Love it. Listen first, don't rush into anything without understanding it first. Is is such a beautiful, beautiful piece of advice because I feel like as human beings, we can be emotional. We hear something, we want to charge forward without sitting back, reading the terrain, seeing what's going on and making calculated moves. So 100%, love it. If a girl tells you something about an experience as a guy, it's good to just sit back. Even if you've never experienced it before, just listen. Advice number two, how can men help plus be better allies? Don't dismiss our experiences, this is the girl's perspective. Don't dismiss our experiences because they're not congruent with your experiences. This is why boys and girls need to be raised differently because your experiences are gonna be different than my experiences. Just because I haven't been groped or haven't been harassed doesn't mean that you don't get harassed or mistreatment from guys. And it's important to understand that. 
we're growing up in a different society. We're, we're seeing the world in a different way. Our perceptions are different. Thus, that changes the reality that we live in. Exactly. I cannot dismiss your experience because you have a different experience that I do. And a, and a large part of it is because of your sex. It's because you're a woman. And I should validate that and say, you know what? No, I don't know what that's like. But I'm more than happy to listen. Awesome. Good job, Lucy. Good job. Well done. Advice number three. How can men help plus be better allies? Speaking up when they hear another man saying inappropriate things. 100%. 100%. I couldn't agree more. I think it's one of those situations where it's like, I mean, you know, you got people who make jokes or whatever, but but if if I ever heard that, or or I would assume if the people around me who I know and I trust, if they heard that stuff, that's not something that we tolerate. Again, we have sisters, we have mothers, we have people in our lives, and 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 we don't want anybody treated like that. Like just a human being, period. You just you don't talk to people like that, and you don't do things against someone's will or against someone's consent to make them uncomfortable. So I couldn't agree more. You, you got to speak. There's a beautiful quote that I saw online. It was like. If you got a police academy and you got 98 good cops and two bad cops, in total, you only got two bad cops. But if you have a police academy where you have 100 cops in total, 98 cops who are neutral and two bad cops, but those 98 don't do anything about those two, you've got 100 bad cops. Because if you're being passive and if you're letting it happen, it's like, dude, you're, you know, you're part of the problem. Uh, next tip, how can men help plus be better allies believe women and stop treating testimonies like an intellectual exercise or debate? Okay, first problem, believe women. The, the problem with social media is, and oh man, I would have loved to have Lucy on the podcast so she can kind of elaborate on this, but believe women, what does that mean? Does that mean believe every woman who tells me about an experience? Really? Every woman? I, I don't think so. I, I disagree. I think it's very hard to be in a situation where it's a very traumatic event and talking about it is hard and then to have someone possibly call you a liar that's freaking horrible that doesn't mean there aren't people who lie look at johnny depp and his um he's now divorcee right the girl man oh yeah he abuses me he did he did this and that evidence came out and said no it was the other way around she abused him threw things at him cut him people do make up things and people do lie and they like to play a victim and no i don't think you should believe all women i don't think you should believe all men I don't think you should believe all of anything. You shouldn't believe all presidents. You shouldn't believe all politicians. You shouldn't believe all professors. Can we say believe 90% of women? 90%? I'm sure the majority, 100%, you've gone through a terrible thing. And I don't want to call you a liar that you're making things up or that you're exaggerating. But are there women who exaggerate things and twist the story around in order to benefit in some way? 100%. 100%. The reason why Canada does not have a death penalty is because we thought, man, God forbid we convict someone of the death penalty who was actually innocent. Because it has happened before. In, in all over the world, right? People get convicted when they're not actually guilty. They get put in jail for 15, 20 years. God forbid there's a girl who makes a claim, who makes something up, and it absolutely ruins someone's life. If this was true, just believe women. What if someone came out tomorrow and said, hey, Daniel sexually assaulted me. Yeah, we went to middle school together. He went to the bathroom area and, and he, you know, I told him to stop and I cried. Blah, blah, blah. I've never you know, said it since. I've had the courage and now I'm telling people. What would happen? If you heard that, what would you do? Would you automatically believe and go, well, why would you make that up? Would you text me, oh, you F you, you piece of garbage, I thought you were good. Or would you text me and be like, hey man, have you heard this? Like, what, what's this about? And I text you back and go, dude, I've never met this person before in my life. I have no idea what she's talking about. Seriously, if you read something like that, from, now again, I don't, I don't want you to look at everyone as if they're lying, but it's like, for you to just assume that any statement, any allegation is true, that's, that's not a good way to go. Because you could ruin someone's life, lose sponsorships, lose their job, people would treat them differently. But again, if you don't do anything about the woman's allegation, you say, well, you know, it's normal, you know, everybody does that to girls. That's not right either. So it's, it's cautious. It's a balance. And also, stop treating testimonies like an intellectual exercise or debate. L lady, there's no exercise. But I do want to make sure, I do want to get the whole story. Where were you? Were you drinking that night? You know, where was he? Was he alone? You know, were you in a room? Where did this happen? What time was it? Were you by yourself? Did anybody see you? How long did it? You know what I mean? Like You, you want to get the whole story. So it's like, you kind of have to. You know, I, I don't like that word, intellectual exercise. Like, 
I'm going to belittle you for, for talking about something that happened to you. Like, no, no, no. But I definitely want to get the full story. Next tip, how can men help? Plus be better allies. Understand that this happens to every woman. Not just the unlucky ones. Every woman. I, I would have to agree with that. I would have to think almost every woman has had an instance at one point of her life where she's felt uncomfortable, been harassed, had someone catcall her, had someone said or done something to her, or even just felt the feeling of being uncomfortable in and of itself. And um, that's important to be mindful of. That's really important to, to just kind of have that perspective. So yeah, definitely. How can men help plus be better allies? Choose to be an ally because it's the right thing to do, not as a father and husband. I agree. Like You should just choose to be an ally because it's the right thing to do, because it's immoral, because it's wrong. You should stand up for a human being regardless of their sex, regardless of their ethnicity. Well done, Lucy. How many more we got? Okay, we got three more, three more. How can men help plus be better allies? Avoid making random conversation with lone women you don't know, especially at night. Uh, that's a little problematic. Avoid making random conversation with lone women you don't know, especially at night. And then women will say, I don't, I don't, I don't understand why guys don't approach me anymore. Because he's scared. He's so worried that he's going to come up. He's going to say something. And that might, be, that might come across as harassment. He's got no idea what harassment means. I mean, he's not going to try to make you feel uncomfortable on purpose. But girls do this thing where he'll go up. He'll say something. He'll be like, hey, you know, do you want to go out? Do you want to do something? And she'll laugh. She'll be like, ha, ha, ha. Oh, no. It's like, first of all, why are you laughing? That's not a funny situation, right? But you're not doing it on purpose. It's just kind of subconscious. You want to be polite. You want to turn him down. You don't want to make him angry, right? But it's like, avoid making random conversation with lone women you don't know. It's like, why? Why? Why can't I see a woman who's by herself and just be like, huh, she looks cute. Let, you know, let me go see what her plans are for Friday night. You know, but again, I think I don't want to go hard on this girl, but it depends on context, right? You know, if it's me and my buddy and we're walking and he starts, you know, hollering at some girl walking across the streets. Like, hey, man, dude, don't do that. Right. No woman has ever liked me. Cat called. Just cut it out. But if me and my friend are sitting at a coffee shop and he's like, hey, man, you see that cute girl over there? I want to go ask her out. I'd be like, go for it, champ. Good luck. Go over there, 20 seconds later, come back like, ah, nah, she had a boyfriend. Like, all right, man, well, you know, better luck anyways. You know, it's like avoid making random conversation with lone women you don't know. That's fine, but just know that you got to approach us then. That's another huge reason you got to approach us then. Second to last tip, stop cat calling, wolf whistle, car beeping, night or day, 100%. Cat calling, get that stuff out of here, son. Right? It's like, you know the confidence you got to have to hit on a woman as she's walking away from you? Hey, beautiful, you're, you're, oh, okay. Hey, young lady, where are you off to? Oh, like, what, what are you doing? What are you doing, right? I, no, 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 I'm not a fan. And lastly, how can men help plus be better allies? As simple as cross the road or give women personal space. I will say this, I have seen girls at, at parties or of um, like clubs or something, and the guy, if he's taller than or bigger than her, he'll, he'll kind of look a little intimidating. So if he's coming up to her, he might get a little too uncomfortably close. He'll put his arm up, like let's say on like a leaning wall, he'll be leaning into her, and you can see her body posture, she's just leaning back, like, uh, I don't feel comfortable. But she doesn't say anything, right? So I think it's definitely important to just be relevant of personal space and whatnot. Unfortunately, this is not an excuse, but if you do a martial art, like wrestling or something, you, you kind of forget what personal space is because you just freaking, you, you hug that son of a gun tight, right? <laughs> but no, you should always have perspective and know what personal space is for different people. And that was all of Lucy's post. Lucy, thank you very much for your word and message. But yeah, that, that's, that's my take on the whole thing. You know, it's like boys and girls should be raised differently because of our biological differences, because of our psychological differences, because of the different obstacles that are going to be in front of us. Right? You gotta focus on different things for different situations because of all the points that I gave earlier. And again, what can men do to be better? It's just be conscious, right? Again, look around, you see people saying something that you don't agree with, call them out on it. You know, that's not okay. Um, yeah, man, it's tough. I mean, I wanna say, you know, what can women do? And the only thing that comes to mind is like, well, be aggressive, be assertive, be confrontational, say no. You know, like be mean, be insulting. Right? I've seen this is the funniest thing. Uh, a guy will be like, hey, baby, like, you want to do something? And she's like, no, like, no, like, get out of here, you ugly blah, blah, blah. And then immediately he just gets super pissed off. Like, you're ugly anyways. Like, bro, she wasn't ugly 20 seconds ago. She just became ugly because she rejected you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, it's it really it's just one of those situations where it's like, please just be safe. Be cautious. Be mindful. And it's like, there's always going to be those guys out there. 
you know, and to have this kind of utopian thought that like, oh, you know, one day guys will just stop sexually assaulting. One day people will just stop breaking the law. I don't think so. I don't think so. And, and I want you to be safe and I care for your safety and your well-being. And I think you should assume for the worst. I don't want you to be paranoid if you're listening to this, ladies, but I do want you to be cautious. That's the only solution that I see here. Because guys like me were aware that it's bad. But it's the guys who, who don't care. That's, that's what I'm worried about. That's what I'm worried about, 100%. That's why I'm so, um, it's so interesting when I see two girls walking home late at night and they're both drunk and they can barely hold their balance. I'm like, you're either really brave or really, really not too smart. Because what if a guy wants to come, punches one in the face and, and easily just, just could beat you both up and do whatever he wanted to you. One reason why I don't drink or rarely drink ever at parties is I want to be sharp. I want to be ready in case something happens. What if I have to defend myself? What if I have to defend a friend? What if there's a first, a first aid scenario? What if someone needs CPR and I'm like halfway, you know, wasted? Right? You've got to be careful. And it's like, man, we have to find this in between. I don't want you to be paranoid looking over your back all the time. But I don't want you to have this idea of like, well, hopefully one day, you know, Everybody will just stop killing it. Everybody will just stop kidnapping. And it's that, that's, I don't think so. Or not, not for the, the, this period of time anyway. I don't, know, I don't know what the answer is besides just be careful out there. Boys and girls should be raised differently. We have a different world out there. Just be conscious, you know. Does society play a role? 100%. But does biology and psychology play a role? You wouldn't believe. You wouldn't believe how impactful it is. I wish I could send this off on a good note, but it's, it's really just that this is what life is. And I don't want to sugarcoat it or BS it as something else that it's not. It is. It's a tough place and, and you got to toughen up. We all have to toughen up. You know? And everybody should just try to be better. Right? But you got to understand, ladies. When, when you say things like, you know, all men are trash. Or, you know, men need to step up. Like, men need to change. It, I don't know. I want to say it's not the right way to go, but I don't have a substitute for it. Because the problem is with sayings like that, you get my attention and you get other guys' attention who are not harassing women and who aren't, you know, in that category. You're not getting the attention of the, the dude who's already doing it. What is the answer to this problem? If it's not just, hey, be cautious all the time. I am. I am almost all the time, but again, I'm not a girl. So I, I don't know what that would be like. I think that's a different level of caution that you have to have. That's all that I have for today, folks. That's all that I, that I have for today. I hope that I was able to come across concisely. I, was, I hope that I was able to give my points and my examples. Again, this is just my opinion. You could 100% disagree. You know, you, you clicked on the video. <laughs> you, you clicked on the podcast, you know. So I'm curious what your thoughts are. You know, I'm so curious. Do you agree with what I've said? Are there things in here that resonated with you? Are there things that I said today that you were just like, no, dude, I 100% disagree. Here's why. I would genuinely love to hear them. If you can, uh, reach me out. I think IG is a pretty easy way to do it, right? At Daniel Teaches. You know, otherwise you can comment on like the YouTube videos. Unfortunately, you can't comment on like Apple iTunes podcast or Spotify podcast. But yeah, folks, those have been my thoughts from a psychology student based on the current way that we look at girls and boys and how they're raised. So thank you very much for listening. Have a safe rest of your day and take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.